Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are going to be building the ultimate Chromebook using the ASUS ZenBook UX31e. This uh, is a very, very beautiful machine that was built somewhere around 2012. This is one of the first generation Ultrabooks that was... Uh, I purchased it uh, right after I graduated from high school. Uh, expecting to use this as my main laptop all throughout college. However, I was very, well, not really disappointed, but I didn't enjoy using the machine as much, as nearly as much as I thought I would. Uh, the main problem is the keyboard is a bit lackluster. Um, tactile, uh, the tactile feel of the keys is not great, and there's not much travel. Um, also, the touchpad was a bit iffy for me. Um, it seems all right, but the driver is just, eh, there was just something that wasn't quite there. It just wasn't a fluid experience like I was hoping for. But this is a plenty powerful machine running a Core i5, 4 gigs of RAM, and I think it is a prime candidate for installing the uh, open source version of Chrome OS called Cloud Ready from Neverware. Um, I know in the previous video that I just released a little bit ago, I mentioned that I was going to be showing you how to install Cloud Ready on an HP 6005 Pro. However, I decided to scrap that idea. Instead of going with a low-end machine, we were going to take it and install it on something much, much better. And with this, we will basically be building the ultimate Chromebook because this is an absolutely gorgeous, just wafer-thin machine that has very nice specs for how small it is and I think it will make an excellent, excellent Chromebook. Um, to get started with uh, installing Cloud Ready, you're going to first have to navigate over to their website here, which is www.neverware.com, and you will go ahead and click Get Started for Free, and it will take you to the Download Options here. Go ahead and select For Home, as long as you are using this for personal use. Um, they do offer business licensing, so it costs money if you want to use it in a large business, but for your own personal use at home, around, whatever, uh, you can go ahead and just click download now for free. Um, since this is a 64-bit machine, we are going to go with the 64-bit version of Cloud Ready, so I'm going to go ahead and select that. That is going to download. It's 589 megabytes, so around six minutes to complete. Uh, while that is downloading, We'll notice uh, as you scroll down here, there's a nicely laid out uh, PDF that goes through the full installation instructions. I won't go uh, through this in huge detail, um, but what you will need is a machine that is running a Google Chrome. Uh, you will need to be ha you will need to have Google Chrome installed on a machine and be able to access it access it for this purpose. Um, you'll actually be installing an add-on. Um, called Chromebook Recovery Utility. Uh, as you can see here, it is on the third page of the guide. Go ahead and click that. And uh, also, when this uh, when this is done downloading, do not unzip it. Just leave it as a zipped file, and that will be fine. You'll be selecting it using this tool. Go ahead and click Add to Chrome once that loads. <clears throat> and then click Add App. That will go ahead and install the Chromebook recovery utility onto your machine, and that is used to create the bootable USB stick for this operating system. <clears throat> Today I'm going to be using this uh, very badly broken PNY flash drive. Uh, it's a 16 gig drive. It says it requires a minimum of 4 gigs, but I would go with at least an 8 gig drive just to be safe. Um, when you're ready here, go ahead and insert that into the USB port of your computer. I'm actually running this on a nice little Intel NUC that I have been playing with for the past few months here. Been a very nice little machine for me, and I have it set up with a nice little dual display wall-mounted thing here in the basement lab setup. As you can see, I'm running battery discharge tests over here, and you have to bear with me. My throat is getting quite sore. <clears throat> It's asking me to format this disk. It actually already has the installation media for um, for the operating system on it for Cloud Ready, but I am going to go ahead and overwrite it nonetheless. <clears throat> once that's done installing, once you have the Chromebook Recovery Utility done, you can click Launch App. 
and it will bring up another window here. And once you have that open, click on the little gear up in the upper right hand corner next to the X and then click use local image. <clears throat> and that will take you to this uh, screen that allows you to select your image file. <clears throat> Okay, our file has finally got done downloading here. Go ahead and click the gear icon. Click use local image, as I said before. Navigate to wherever your downloads are. In my case, it's in the downloads folder. And click on the cloud ready free bin file and click open. Now we'll go ahead and select the media that we want to use. And the only option I have here is for the PNY USB uh, 2.0 FD, whatever the heck that is, and it's 16 gigabytes, 14.9, and click continue. Um, now you go ahead and create now. As long as you don't have anything on that flash drive you want, it will be completely overwriting the flash drive, which is fine, so I will click create now. <clears throat> now this does take quite some time to create the image. Uh, expect around like 20 minutes or so to create it, so we will go ahead and jump cut to when that is complete. Okay, that is done creating the media. We're going to go ahead and click done on it and close out of all of this and eject that flash drive. <clears throat> and now we can get to the fun part. <clears throat> go ahead and install the flash drive into whatever machine you'll be installing this on and let's boot it up. Uh, for here we have the, as I mentioned before, the ASUS UX31A Ultrabook. I apologize for the camera work. Just getting this installed on the tripod properly. And, and now we're going to go ahead and boot up the Chromebook into Cloud Ready OS. Hit the power and begin pressing escape so we can get into the boot menu. Wow, that looks weird on the camera. There's not actually this weird black mark in it. I don't know what the deal is with that. Probably some sort of reflection. And it's going to boot into Windows anyway. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure what we did before. I'm going to go ahead and hold Escape while it's booting and see if that changes anything. Um, it's either Escape or Delete. I'm going to try Escape first. If that doesn't do it, then we'll try Delete. There we go. You hold down escape, and I'm going to select the PNY flash drive here, and click enter, and we're going to go ahead and see if it boots up. We do have a cloud-ready logo. That's a good sign. I'm going to go ahead and overwrite Windows 10 that I installed on here since, honestly, I haven't used the machine since I put Windows 10 on it, and I would rather have Chrome OS now. So we're going to give this a shot and see how well it works. <clears throat> I'm hoping my camera doesn't fall forward onto the laptop since I've messed around with the tripod. Just uh, bear with me here a second while I get this adjusted properly so it's not going to drop down and scratch the laptop. There we go. That is probably much safer. Who knows? <clears throat> now, I'm not sure how long this is going to take to boot up. Previous, previously when I installed it on the Latitude D430, it didn't take that long, but it, t it did take a little while to boot off the USB stick. Um, and that's a very simple process to install, and I will be walking you through that step by step here. And we're going to go ahead and take a look at the performance of this system once it is booted. <clears throat> okay, we are at our first um, prompt here while installing. And it's basically just giving you the options to select your language and keyboard input. I will notice that the uh, the first thing I noticed here is the trackpad is a bit sluggish, although it feels smooth. Um, now what I do to install is I go down here to the little menu bar, uh, click Install Cloud Ready, <clears throat> click the button that says Install. Um, and then go ahead and click Install Cloud Ready Standalone and Erase Hard Drive and Install Cloud Ready. That is, if you want to install this as the only operating system, you can go back and click Install alongside an additional operating system if you want a dual boot. However, with this machine, I do not want to go with any sort of dual boot system. I am just going to wipe it and install just Cloud Ready. <clears throat> now, this will take a little while to install. Um, 
I don't know how long it, it took for the D430 earlier because I walked away and let it do its thing. So we're going to see here how long it takes. It takes about like five or six minutes to boot it up off of the flash drive to get to this point. So we'll see how long this part takes. Okay guys, the machine has finished installing and now um, it automatically shuts off when it's done. It took around 15 minutes or so to install. i go ahead and turn it back on and see how this thing performs. <clears throat> I'm hoping this will perform significantly better than the Dell uh, Latitude over there that we tried a little bit ago. Um, although its performance wasn't terrible, this should be noticeably better since I'm running a Core i5 in here. It's a low clocked 1.3 to 1.6 gigahertz Core i5, but it does turbo and this should be plenty good enough to run Chrome OS or Cloud Ready OS as this is actually called. Um, I'm already noticing that the boot times are very quick. Um, to go to continue here we have to select a network since this is basically Chrome OS it does require a network. Apologize about that. And now we will continue once this gets done connecting. It does require an internet connection to get it set up. However, if you don't have an internet connection um, after it's set up, it will still function, uh, although under um, far more restricted usage types. I mean, a lot of things, a lot of features aren't going to be available since this is a cloud-based operating system. Go ahead and click continue. And... It's going to check for updates, so hopefully this doesn't take too incredibly long to do. <clears throat> we will cut to when that is finished. Okay, that looks like it's done, and now it is asking to accept a EULA for Adobe Flash, so we're going to go ahead and accept and install that. Um, this really should go pretty quickly. Um, before on the other machine it didn't take very long at all to install, so hopefully this does the same. Um, I'm not sure why that doesn't come pre-packaged, probably because they don't have the license in order to package it with the operating system, however it is nice that it gives you the uh, option to install it right off the bat there. <clears throat> now it looks like the machine is pretty much done here. It's asking for our login information. So we will use a Google account to log in here. I'm not sure if the camera is actually focusing on that or not. And that's my email address. If you ever want to send me anything, please don't spam it. I should really block that out, but I guess it doesn't really matter at this point. <clears throat> Now that should be logging us in, uh, syncs over our preferences, and now we should be greeted with our desktop. Um, not sure why it hasn't brought up the background yet. I'm sure it will here in a few minutes. Uh, removable device detected, it says. That's probably our flash drive that we use to install. <clears throat> so far it seems to be running okay, however the background has not loaded. So I'm going to click Set Wallpaper. And, oh, there we go. There's our background. Our background has loaded. And now everything seems to be working. The trackpad is a little bit sluggish, as I said before. Well, it's not terrible. Um, I will be testing out the multi-finger gesture things later on here. Um, however, I'm going to go into settings. This is very snappy. And let's see, yes, two-finger scrolling does indeed work, and it feels very fluid. <clears throat> now we're going to go into advanced settings. Not sure where things such as trackpad sensitivity would be. Um, don't believe it's in here. I would imagine you can probably change that, but... <clears throat> ah, here we go. Touchpad speed. I'm just going to bump that up a little bit. Uh, 
that's a little bit too fast. It appears to have uh, a <clears throat> very coarse adjustment when it comes to the trackpad. So I'm just going to bump it up to the next setting and we're going to call it good there, which that, that feels okay at the uh, second to highest sensitivity setting. Um, overall, the OS is feeling very snappy so far, which I like quite a lot. We're going to go ahead and open Chromium. And yes, this is, this is a fantastic feeling experience. Uh, my internet connection is not the greatest. However, the machine, whoop, whoop, drop in camera. However, the machine is running very nicely. Let's go ahead and go to YouTube and we'll check out my channel here and see how well it does with playing 1080p content. This machine was fully capable of playing 1080p videos before, so I expect it to still be fully capable of playing 1080p videos. We're going to see if that is the case. <clears throat> I'm not sure why our internet connection is so slow these past few days, but it is excruciatingly slow. And whenever I go to upload a new video, it takes literally hours for a few hundred megabytes, and the internet is totally unusable at that time. Um, I'm going to go ahead and play one of the videos on my U8 smartwatch. If you haven't seen those, go ahead and check them out. They were a couple months ago, um, and that is playing... Go ahead and mute that, because I don't want to hear myself whine and moan about a cheap piece of technology. Now I'm going to set it to 1080p, and we'll see if video playback remains smooth. <clears throat> and that is if our network can handle streaming 1080p, which it should, because I've had no trouble with it before up until just recently. Um, this is a little bit irritating, because it is still buffering. Um, but now, now once it got done buffering, it does appear to be playing back smoothly, as I would expect for this machine. Go ahead and stop that and try loading up, like, uh, let's try CNN's website like we did with the other machine. Search for that, and that is very quick. <clears throat> now it's taking a little bit to load, but that's mainly due to our internet connection, as I said before. And we get to see Donald Trump again and somebody claiming that he's a Mexican or some crap like that. I don't really understand what all this is about, and I want to stay as far away from politics as I humanly can. So, this is very smooth, very usable. Um, the multi-touch on the touchpad actually works properly now, and it feels very smooth. A lot like a Mac, actually, in how they uh, respond, which I will say is a good thing. Um... I have a MacBook Pro from around 2011, late 2011, early 2012, and it responds very nicely with the touchpad. Um, I will have to up the scroll speed a little bit here because it's a little bit slow, but it's got that kind of inertia behind it when you scroll that's very nice, and it feels extremely smooth. So I have no complaints there. That loaded up that really well. Um, <clears throat> So yes, this is working very, very nicely. Let's check out like eBay and see how well it handles a site like that. Um, again, extremely smooth, just buttery smooth. Everything seems very nice here. Let's search for something like an 18650 battery and see what kind of nasty Chinese junk they've got here. Um, well, that's not nasty. There's some Sanyo cells. <clears throat> but as we're scrolling here, we'll notice this is very, very, very smooth. <clears throat> wow, 310 Panasonic NCR18650B cells, 3400 milliamp hour, $930 for 310 of them. Well, if those are actually real cells, I would be cons I could actually consider buying those cuz uh um, as you can see over here, I've been, <coughs> pardon the cup, uh, I've been testing just tons and tons of these 18650 cells, all salvaged from Chinese laptop batteries, because that is the cheapest way I have found to find a half-decent quality cell at a cheap price. They come around to about $1.50 per cell. Um, and I've been just ripping the battery packs apart and testing them one at a time for my up-and-coming new electric bike battery 
and that's going to be around 30 to 35 amp hours and it should take me around 70 to 80 miles on a charge once that is completed. Uh, my current battery I get around 30 to 35 miles on a charge uh, and that is with a lot of pedaling. Um, I'm hoping I can get that sort of range without having to pedal nearly at all on the new battery pack. Um, all of these cells are between 1800 and 2.2 amp hour that I have so far. I would like to have higher capacity cells, but right now I can't afford to go with name brand cells, so I'm stuck with going with these off-brand ones. But anyway, let's get back on topic here. Um, so far, this seems really, really nice. Um, I'm quite pleased with this. Uh, the OS seems to be running very, very smoothly. Um, but yeah. It is working well. Let's go ahead and do the same thing we did before on the other machine and go to Wallpaper Abyss, which has lots of high resolution images while you're searching for things and search for nature again. <clears throat> and that is working beautifully. This is a much, much faster machine as it should be because this has much, much higher specs. Um, but yeah, guys, I think I have pretty much built the ultimate Chromebook here. Uh, this thing runs beautifully. It looks beautiful. It is built like a tank, and it should get pretty decent battery life once it's all said and done. I will be continuing testing on this for a few days, and I will give you guys any updates if you want. Go ahead and leave a comment down in the comment section. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. And let me know what you think I can do to improve these, and I will see you guys in the next video.